Hi, and thanks for joining me again. Um, I had a project today that I was working on. It is my personal elf coat. Um, I have made a lot of elf coats, well, like three, which is not really that many, but <laughs> um, feels like a lot because they do take a lot of time. Um, I've made a few elf coats, but none for myself. And so I was working on a size small elf coat for me in um, some of my favorite colors. And I had just completed the skirt wedges portion of the pattern. And when I completed the wedges, I realized I had made one too many of the wedges for the skirt. So um, the small size skirt takes nine of the wedges so it should ideally be four of the simple wedges which are the mostly straight ones that don't have a lot of flare and then five of the pointed see the point down here that are more flared out and alternating these wedges makes that pretty um, roughly pointed hem on the skirt however I miscounted and made six pointed wedges. So instead of frogging the last wedge that I made or, um, you know, tossing it, I decided to uh, just make a 10 wedge skirt for the bottom portion of my elf coat. So here's the skirt portion that I've got so far. As you can see, we've got pointed, simple, pointed, simple, and then two pointed ones in the middle. So normally in the middle of the skirt, I would do one of the pointed wedges and then alternate going outward. So a uh, small has two uh, pointed at the front ends and then a medium will have the simple at the front ends and then a large will have pointed again because of the way that those wedges work out. But instead I chose to do two pointed in the middle and that's where the, that extra wedge is placed for this skirt. Now, if you add more wedges to the bottom portion of your skirt, then the pattern calls for um, which you can do and or if you have are bigger on the bottom than you are on top and you need um, uh, or or maybe you have a, a, a size medium on top, but you need a small down below You can connect those two portions of the elf coat um, You can mix and match the size. So that's why I'm uh, bringing this project in today to talk about how to attach the elf coat bottom portion to the top portion if you have extra wedges or need to somehow match up the sizes differently. So this is a 10 wedge piece and I'm going to attach it to the small size elf coat, top, the top part, which I have right here. Here's the top portion all completed. It's kind of a, here I've got the long hood, well, it's not as long, it's like the reduced size hood. And then I've got my sleeves and I've already got that border on the sleeves. And it's got that new shape, which I recently updated. This shoulder shaping is new. So I'm going to switch over to crocheting in front of the camera and we're gonna talk about how to attach the bottom portion. So what we're going to do is we're going to work that waistband across the top of the wedges next in that video. So the beginning of the waistband worked across these skirt wedges um, is just Working Tunisian knit stitches into pretty much every stitch across the top of every wedge. We're just going to skip one stitch here. So we're going to have 14 stitches per wedge. So we're skipping this part that has the actual seam worked into it. So the, the total number of stitches at the top of a wedge is 15. 
and we're skipping one per wedge where the seam is. So each, we each wedge is gonna have 14 for the top. So I'm gonna join my yarn here. And as you can see, I work my first row of Tunisian stitches into the bottom of the chain. So now that I'm coming to work this other side, I have these two top loops left in order to work into. And that's just like working the top of like, you know, a single crochet or whatever. So that makes it easy. So I'm just gonna join my yarn pull up a loop and I'm going to pull up 13 more loops from those top loops that are left over from the foundation chain. Kind of hard to do keeping on camera, <laughs> but I'm trying. Whoops, not bump my tripod with my very long Tunisian hook. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen stitches for this top wedge. So, we're gonna skip. Oh my God, there's so many ends I'm gonna have to weave in later. Mm, love that. So we're gonna skip this seam and move right on to the next wedge and work 14 stitches. Trying to keep those yarn ends out of the way and it's a little bit tight. As you can see, I'm having trouble getting my hook into some of these. Um, just takes a little bit of patience. And I'm going to work 14 stitches into the next top of the wedge. So we're connecting one long row across all of these wedges that we've made. So the idea is um, the number of stitches in the waistband portion of your elf coat will just be the number of wedges you have in the skirt times 14. And so I'm going to count. I've got two wedges now. I should have two times 14, so 28 stitches on my hook. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. And that's perfect because I've reached the seam here, which again, we skip this last 15th stitch that's become part of the seam. This helps reduce that. There's this a pull and a stretch here at the seam that when you get all the wedges sewn together and you don't have the waistband on yet, it looks like it's come out very big and that's because there's this stretching and like this pulling at the seam and the waistband skips that seam stitch and that helps correct the width of the skirt portion. So I'm going to keep moving on across these wedges. And the whole point of this video is because I have 10 wedges. Like I mentioned, I did one extra wedge for my skirt. And I thought, well, I'll just make an extra flared skirt. But to do that, so I'm going to have 14 extra stitches because I have an extra wedge and remember we have 14 stitches per wedge for the number of stitches in the waistband. So if I have 14 extra stitches, then the pattern calls for 
and I'm gonna need to connect the top part of my elf coat to that waistband. So how do I do that if I have 14 extra stitches? Well, you can either choose to just seam it together and just skip 14 stitches at the seam or like double stitch 14 stitches when you're seaming the waistband to the top part of the coat or you can reduce the waistband by those extra 14 stitches and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do 14 stitches per top of the waistband or I'm sorry per top of the wedges for the waistband and then in the following rows which I think there's like 17 waistband rows if you follow the uh, number written in the pattern. So at some point over those 17 rows, I'm going to decrease 14 times. So I'll lose 14 stitches. And by the time I'm done with the waistband, the number of waistband stitches will equal the amount of stitches that I need to connect to the top of the coat. And as I mentioned earlier, this these two portions of the coat can be mixed and matched if you want to have a large size bottom of the coat but a medium size top you can work that large size skirt portion which the large size has 13 wedges in the bottom so you're gonna have 13 times 14 number of stitches in the bottom portion of the skirt at the waistband. But the large has 13 wedges and the medium has 11. So you have two more wedges on the bottom of the skirt for the large than you do on the medium. So therefore, if you want to connect a large size skirt to a medium size elf coat top, you're going to use those waistband rows to decrease however many extra stitches you have, the difference between the medium and the large. So if you have a medium elf coat top and you want to connect to a large elf coat bottom because there's two extra wedges on the large, you're going to have 28 extra stitches that you need to decrease by in your waistband so that your last row of the waistband has an equal number of stitches to the medium sized top. <clears throat> so because I have one extra wedge, I'm going to decrease by 14. If I had two extra wedges, like if I were attaching a large size to a medium sized top, I would decrease by 28 over the course of those waistband rows. So you could either do that as, you could either do that by, um, I think I need to skip that stitch. You could do that by decreasing them all in one row. So you would lose, you would decrease like 14 times in one row if you were just had one extra wedge or 28 times in one row if you had two extra wedges. But I would recommend doing a more gradual decrease because you have like, I think it's 17, I'd have to check. Um, you'd have like a lot of waistband rows over which to make those decreases. So I would say a more gradual change would look better. So like if you have, say you wanna do like, um, huh, 14 rows in the waistband just to make the math easy. So say you want to do a 14 row waistband length and you had two extra wedges, you have 14 rows to decrease by 28. So 14 goes into 28 twice. So you would do two decreases per row and you would only be losing two stitches per row and that would make the decrease very like gradual and and the piece would really flow out more whereas if you decrease by 28 in a single row 
the change would be more sudden, if that makes sense. I just finished up my first row of waistband stitches. And since I had 10 wedges with 14 stitches at the top of each wedge, I should have had 140 stitches across the top, 140 total. I think I maybe had 139, but we'll say that I had 140. I think I missed one while I was talking on video, which is easy to do. Um, but so we'll just say I had 140. So now that I've got that number, I have that those 14 extra stitches from the extra wedge. And now I have to decide how I'm going to get rid of those stitches so that my stitch counts match up with the top of the elf coat. So when I seam it together, I can seam stitch for stitch. I think for this row, at least, I'm going to just stitch across and keep my 140 stitches. So I'm going to start my regular tunage and crochet, remembering that the first loop is the first stitch so I don't work into that stitch. I'm just going to begin working across stitch for stitch. So now I finished the second row of my waistband stitching for the top of the skirt wedges on the elf coat. And I've got to decide how I want to decrease my stitches so that they match the number um, that I'm going to seam to the top. Now, since I have one more extra waistband I, uh, or extra wedge, I need to reduce the waistband by 14 stitches, as I mentioned. And I have, let's say, 14 rows. I think there's actually more total rows than that in the waistband, but I've already done two and 14 makes the math easy. So I'm gonna say I have 14 more rows to lose those 14 stitches. And I'm not going to decrease all at once. I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, I'm gonna decrease by two stitches every other row. So this row, I'm going to find two places where I work a decrease by one. So let's say I'm just going to do that at the edges, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and start working my row. If I were going to do all the decreases in one row, I would just total the number of stitches I have on the waistband and then divide by the number of stitches that I needed to decrease by. And then that number is how many stitches in between your decrease. But I'm going to make it very gradual and just do decrease by two stitches for seven rows. So that's every other row in my next 14 rows, I'm going to work decreases. So, and it's just a decrease by one. So it's like the tiniest little decrease. It'll be a super gradual transition in number across that waistband. So it will not even be obvious that you've done any decreasing really. So in my next two stitches, I'm going to work a decrease. So I'm going to put my hook through two stitches at once, work my regular Tunisian knit decrease, See, I've got those two stitches and the one loop coming out of those two stitches. So I've worked one decrease. And I'm going to carry on across this row and work my second decrease at the other end. So if you are working more decreases, You would have to do different math. So say, you know, if you wanted to attach a large size skirt to a medium size elf coat, the bodice, you would need to decrease by 28 stitches because you'd have two extra wedges than the medium. 
So you could take those 14 rows and do two decreases every single row instead of every other row, and that would get you 28 total decreases, which means you've lost 28 stitches over the course of that. And that would land you with the correct number of waistband stitches to attach to the medium-sized elf coat top. And you might do the opposite where you want a smaller bottom attached to a larger top um, and you could do increases instead but i would recommend i'm not sure i'd recommend that way if you have a larger like you need a larger bodice like if i don't know your your bust size is larger but your hip size is smaller I would recommend going ahead and working just whatever size fits your bodice and doing the same size skirt portion on the bottom because you can work that corset lacing which makes the waistband adjustable and if you do the let's say a, a medium size bodice with a small size skirt it might not proportionally be as flattering as if you just worked a medium size all around and used the um, tie options like the the corset lacing or the belt tie to cinch in the garment so I've reached the other side now um, mirroring where I did that first decrease which was at the first seam after the out is outermost wedge i'm going to go ahead and do another decrease so i'm catching one loop by inserting my hook through two stitches so that's my second decrease of the row which means i have lost two of my stitches from my stitch count and I'm on my way to losing the 14 total stitches that I need in order to adjust this skirt size to the right waistband stitch count. If I had more stitches to lose, I might place a marker where I'm doing those decreases but because 14 is really not very many out of 140 I'm just gonna kind of wing it where I place those decreases I'm not gonna try and line them up in later rows really because I just I don't think it's gonna make a difference for the shape but if it's safe if you have a small size top of your coat and you were matching it to like a large size on the bottom say like you're small on top but you got a booty that could stop traffic then you would have a lot more stitches to lose and you might want to line them up in a way that's kind of like structures it and looks nice because those decreases will kind of show up if you've got a lot of them but since i'm only losing 14 stitches i think it's fine if i just pop them, you know, wherever uh, the spirit takes me. So I'm going to go ahead and do the return pass on this. And again, I'm going to do these decreases every other row across the next 14 rows. And that's going to give me the total number of stitches I need to attach to the top of my elf coat. And then I'll have a skirt portion with 10 wedges. So that's one extra wedge attached to the regular size top of the elf coat. So I hope that all makes sense. Um, if you have questions about this uh, technique or about this pattern, I do um, try to answer questions really regularly. So you can contact me directly. Um, through the contact options in my bio um, and I love to talk shop and I really love when people show me the things that they've made because it just makes this so worthwhile you know it's a lot of work to 
put out patterns and test stuff. And of course that's my job, but I, also like it makes my day when people send me stuff that they've made and they really enjoy it and like are proud of something that they did for themselves. So send me pictures. <laughs> Um, and yeah, send me questions if you have any. And um, yeah, I hope to uh, see you again soon. And thanks for visiting. So I know I already signed off. So this is kind of a postscript PS. Um, but I wanted to show you, since I'm already doing it, um, how I go about connecting the waistband. Now that I've got all these rows here um, completed, I've got the 126 stitches for the small size waistband that's going to match up to the top. I've already done these decreases that lose the extra stitches that I gained by having the extra wedge in the skirt. So I'm going to go ahead and attach the bottom of the skirt to the top half of the skirt, which is, uh, or the top half of the coat, which is already complete. And my last waistband row, I just left the yarn attached here. And I'm gonna take my regular hook, not Tunisian. Um, I recommend a 350 for my gauge for working regular stitches onto the Tunisian because the Tunisian stitches are so much tighter naturally that you have to go down quite a bit in hook size. This is actually a 3.75. I'm just doing that because I don't want the slip stitches that I use to be too tight. Um, because unlike these wedges, which are sewn together with just a thread and needle, well, a yarn and needle, um, I, attach the waistband to the top half with slip stitching instead of with a needle and thread. So I will work crocheted slip stitches through both layers. So this is the top portion. This is the part at the waist of the top portion. And I'm going to match it up to the waist of the bottom portion. I've still got the yarn from the waistband rows attached. So I'm going to leave that attached at the end of my last waistband row and match up these two pieces. And I'm just going to starting with the piece with the stitch at the very edge I'm going to start working slip stitches through both layers. So I'm going to catch this layer, catch the bottom stitch on this layer. And the first stitch, actually, since I've already got my hook in the first stitch there, I'm going to go around a little bit to get started and insert my hook through that stitch too. And then so both layers, I'm pulling up this loop through both layers. So in the next stitch, I'll insert my hook through that stitch and through the stitch behind it, draw up a loop through both layers and work a slip stitch. Again, next stitch through both layers and slip stitch and that way those stitches are going to connect the waistband portions and the reason I do the slip stitching on the waistband is because it's a little bit firmer and more sturdy to do it that way because um, the sewing method using the strand of yarn, especially if it's a one ply yarn, the yarn can start to unravel or come apart and get it gets weak if you do seams that are too long with it. 
there's a way to avoid that but I prefer for the waistband because it is gonna get kind of stretched and it does have it does have a lot of weight from that skirt pulling on it I prefer this seam to be a slip stitch seam and that's why I wrote it that way in the pattern so here I've got the slip stitch seam is connecting both parts of that fabric top layer and the bottom layer I'm just working I'll turn this over a little bit hopefully you can see these top two loops that are left over from the foundation chain of this piece so I'm going through the first I'm going through those top two loops for that stitch and then on the top of the waistband I've got this open unfinished row of Tunisian stitching so I'm going to insert my hook through each stitch as if I were going to Tunisian so I'm going through these two loops in the middle and out the back and then I'm pulling that loop through and then I'm forming a slip stitch and because I did those decreases I have the 126 stitches on the waistband that matches the 126 total stitches on the bottom part of the bodice so I can just work stitch for stitch two layers at once forming that slip stitch seam and it makes a really sturdy seam and as you can see, it looks really nice here. And if you were gonna put in inset pockets, you could skip over this like part of the portion where you put that pocket in there. If you were gonna do the inset pockets, so that's the pockets that are on the inside, they don't show on the outside. You could skip a portion of your seaming right here and do it that way. Or you could do it the way I show in the pattern, which is to form a space in the middle of those waistband stitches. I'm doing outside pockets on this elf coat, so I'm not going to worry about that. But I did just want to show you how I work these slip stitch seams since I was doing it anyway. Okay, so now I'm logging off for real. I'm going to finish this elf coat, and I hope that you have a magical weekend. I know I'm going to.